Welcome to our weekly update with South Dakota State football. He is John Stigelmeyer, the longtime head coach of the Yellow and Blue, and we have a lot to discuss this week. The University of Northern Iowa was here on Saturday, a matchup of two top 10 programs. We talked about how it would likely be a battle of two very good defenses, played out that way for much of the game, and then you distanced yourself in the fourth quarter, but it was your defense that led the way to that impressive 38-7 win. Yeah, our defense uh, did a great job, uh, play after play. Uh, there were only two big plays uh, from you and I in the game, which is phenomenal. Uh, they created great field position, uh, great turnovers. You know, we flipped what happened the week before, so it was fun to see. And again, up front is where it starts and the rotation on the defensive line and the number of guys that were involved, particularly their ability to continue along with the plays because of how talented McIlvain is at keeping plays alive and how many times we saw him break away from a tackle. That same guy would come back and be involved at the end of the play. Yeah, well, let's give credit to their quarterback, a phenomenal player and, and uh, uh, able to prolonged plays and I mean some of those times I don't know how many yards some of our players ran to try to run him down but uh, it was fun to get the win. All right from an offensive standpoint Keaton Heidi was nearly perfect statistically only one incompletion on the day how did you feel the true freshman play? Again I marvel at at how he stands in the pocket you know when things are caving in I marvel how he he, he seems to get loose sometimes and find somebody to throw the ball to. Uh, very happy with his performance, and I have to say that with stats like he had. So, and I liked him spreading the ball out a little bit also, you know, Cal getting a catch, uh, that type of deal. Uh, I think that'll pay dividends down the road. The Valley newcomer, a co-newcomer of the week, and you see his progression here over his starts because, again, he hadn't really played much up until he makes that uh, first start against Missouri State. So three starts in now, you're seeing his maturation as a quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, he's a very mature young man, you know, off the field and uh, is accepted the leadership role as a true freshman. I think that's cool. The guys respect that. Um, he, he's done a great job and I will continue to expand his role uh, as these weeks go down. I think I've asked you this before, but I had a member of an opposing media group a couple of weeks ago ask me, how does Kay Johnson keep getting open? And my response was, that's the mystery to everybody that plays against him. Uh, tell me about uh, how Kay Johnson continues to get open. Well, Cade, uh, first of all, very athletic. Uh, we design plays, some plays for Cade based on what a coverage's weakness would be. Every coverage has a weakness. But, uh, you know, you take Cade's touchdown catch, uh, he wasn't open. He just went up and got the ball above the DB. So great skill also. C.J. Wilson did not play against UNI, second straight game. He's missed with an injury. Pierre Strong Jr. went down in the first quarter. Uh, before we talk about their status, Mikey Daniel stepped in, had a big day. Devin Blakely had some big carries as a true freshman. Blair Mulholland was a part of a big play in the first half. So having to use all your running backs on the roster at this point. Uh, we are, and, and uh, thank goodness for that four-game rule for true freshmen. And uh, Blair's ready. Mikey's doing his thing. Yeah, I thought Devin played very well for a true freshman. Uh, do we have any update on how both C.J. Wilson and Pierre Strong Jr. look this early in the week? Well, we do not. No, we do not. We haven't met as a staff yet, so I, ha I don't have an update. Simple answer there. From a special team standpoint, uh, Chase Vinatieri got the nod in the kicking game. You had Fromm kick a week ago, and then you had Vinatieri kick on Saturday. Yeah, uh, a couple things. We, we, we had some competition during the week. It was very close. Uh, it was senior day. Uh, we've got the career points leader in Chase Vinatieri, and to me it was a no-brainer. Uh, I wish we had got the hands down on the first one to give him a chance for that field goal. He missed the one real close, and then he made one. So uh, it's a tough job, and the, we're going to battle again this week. But you're very happy with Ben Dinkle's work in the punt game. I am. I think Ben does a nice job. Dan Jackson, the, the coordinator and the, and the lead coach for punt, made some great decisions and not rolling out because we'd done a bunch of that before. Uh, ben Ben's solid. One last note before we look ahead to Saturday. You've had an offensive line that, like the running back position, has had some injuries. West Janant back. He's played the last two games at center after missing the first nine of the year. So that line's had some flux to it the last few weeks, and they played really well on Saturday. They did against a very good uh, defensive uh, UNI team. I was very happy with them. I thought they stayed on blocks really well. Again, you're, you're blocking one of the best defensive teams in the nation there, and so uh, doing a good job. And we're building depth which again pays dividends. All right, let's talk about Saturday, the South Dakota Showdown Series presented by South Dakota Corn. What this game means, you're playing for a top eight seed in the FCS playoffs. We are, we are, and I think uh, it's crystal clear if we win, 
will be a top eight seed. Uh, so that's good. That's not pressure. That's exciting. And that kicks in a whole different system in terms of the playoffs. And so we have to go down there and play our best ball. And because it's a rivalry game and because it's USD and because Coach Nielsen does a great job, we need to up our level again. It will be a little unique, too, in that with the renovations going on in the Dakota Dome, normally it's very lively right behind you on the visitor's bench. There won't be anybody on that side. It's as if you're in witness protection when you go down there on Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. We've, we've, uh, we had, we've had some fun down there through the years. You know, this has been decades for me. Uh, but uh, happy for them to get the a new facility or get it renovated, and I'm sure it'll help them out and, and uh, be great for the fans. Certainly when you discuss USD, it's the offense that comes to mind. And we've spent so much time this year, whether it's your team or talking about McIlvain from UNI or Lance from NDSU about these young quarterbacks. It's not a young quarterback you're going to see on Saturday. He's a senior, he's a veteran, and he can throw the ball all over the field. That's Austin Simmons. Yeah, uh, Austin does a great job. Uh, I really respect him. He'll run the ball also. Uh, very smart. Uh, again, they're an up-tempo team. I mean, we had a total of little over 100 plays in the last game. They've had about that much uh, some of their games just on offense. And so we need to be ready. We need to get our substitutions in so we're fresh. And we need to slow him down if we can. Very talented wide receiving core. One of the better from top to bottom in this league. They are. They are. And, and they can catch the deep ball, the short ball. Again, it all starts with, with uh, Austin uh, seeing the, the coverage, which we got to do a great job of, and, and delivering the ball. But we've seen it a couple of games. Indiana State comes to mind. Youngstown State comes to mind. When they've really been able to take control of games, it's been with Kai Henry. It's been with the run game. Simmons in that mix as well. And no doubt they'll try to do that on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, we have to be ready for the whole thing. And, and I'm not implying that we're going to be ahead so they have to throw the ball a bunch. I just I know uh, he's, the, he's the guy that makes it go for their offense. On a defensive side, you look at maybe one guy in particular that jumps out. I'm sure there's others, but to me, Darren Greenfield, a defensive end, as good as they come. He is. He's a difference maker. We'll be aware of where he's at. Uh, you know, and he's one of those guys that when you pass the ball or run the ball, he can impact the play. Uh, he, he's, he's more than one guy, we'll put it that way. And, uh, and, and so we'll be aware of him. But I think they're very athletic on defense. And they got a new coordinator. They do a lot of movement. And, and we need to be ready for, for a, a good defense by those guys. And when it comes to special teams and you get to field position, if that becomes a factor, they've got one of the best punters in the country in Brady Scott. They do. They do. He does a nice job. He has the benefit of being inside for some of his games. That, that helps out. But, uh, but I love Ben. I love Ben Dinkle, and I'll put him up against anybody. And the last note here, you alluded to it a little bit, the pace of this game really is a contrast in styles because the Coyotes want to run three or four plays in the amount of time it'll take your offense to run one. Yeah, and it's, that's a little bit the way of the world in college football, and we think our recipe for our football team is right, and theirs is right for them, and we'll see how it all works out.